Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give your attention to the groom who will now say a few words. Most of you will be aware, my wife and I, yeah. I say that now, are Facebook junkies. Although uh, one of us is more of a Facebook junkie than the other. Really, she really is. As most of you will be aware, it's true that on more than one occasion, um, I've been down in the kitchen and uh, I've had a message on Facebook saying, please make me a brew, put the washing in. <laughs> or maybe some breakfast. And it's also true that on more than one occasion, uh, we've actually been sat in the same room and Ruthie's been talking to me on Facebook as well. <laughs> but actually, joking aside, we've got a lot to thank Facebook for because it's actually the way that we reconnected after last seeing each other probably about 15 years before. So for those of you who don't actually know our story, uh, uh, Bruce's brother and I, Dan, we used to go to school together at QE2 many, many years ago in the, in the late 80s when we were... Yeah, okay. <laughs> and at that time, uh, we were both kind of geeky 14-year-olds who hadn't discovered the really cool stuff in life, so we hadn't discovered things like going to the pub, girls. driving, <laughs> and girls, absolutely. Yeah, we were quite happy sitting in Dan's bedroom playing on his Commodore Amiga. Well, we done. It's fantastic. And at the same time, Bless and Ruthie uh, used to hang around outside Dan's bedroom door. Uh, waiting to catch a glimpse of me because unfortunately you both had a bit of a crush on me, didn't you, at school, darling? And uh, according to Jeanette, she used to call me the dream boat, bless her. <laughs> Dan used to say things to me. He used to say, oh, my sister fancies it. Oh, she's hanging outside the door. Do you know what I used to say? He used to go, oh, no, that's terrible. It was, uh, yeah, I'm embarrassed to say. But you know what? When you're 14, a three-year age difference uh, is absolutely massive. And so, unfortunately, um, things never quite got off for Ruthie and I all those years ago, did they, love? But now, if you fast forward 20 years from that to 2009, I guess we'll always disagree on who actually made the first move, but we, we do have this constant disagreement. So, I'll hold my hand up and say that it was actually me who made the first move on their love. Because I, I was the one who, again, Facebook requested uh, Ruth on Facebook. Friends requested, sorry. And we became, to, to call it all, a coin and oil phrase, we became pen pals. Uh, and we were catching up on lost gossip, weren't we, from the last 15, 20 years before that. Anyway, in uh, September 2009, I was coming to the Isle of Man for a job interview with Aon, who I work with. And uh, I nervously plucked up the courage to say to Ruth, you know, do you fancy going for a coffee or maybe meeting up for a drink? And uh, Ruth very, very quickly responded to me, do you come to my house for dinner? <laughs> and, uh, so I did. How could I refuse that? And we had a great time, didn't we? We, we caught up on... Not we had, too much information. No, no, no. We had a great laugh. And we, you know, we caught up on, on many, many years of not having seen each other. In fact, we had such a good laugh, didn't we, that Ruth actually almost mowed down an entire zebra crossing the world people in a car. That's actually a different... She's not a bad driver, honest. No, that was, uh, that was quite good. So, heading off from that September, things carried on as, uh, as a bit more than pen pals, probably. And in November, Ruth came out to Bermuda to, to see me. And she came out for Thanksgiving, and so on the second night we went out for dinner, and Ruth said to me, she said, so, okay, what do I do if a guy in the Isle of Man, you know, asks me out to dinner? And I was kind of really put on the spot there, and I went, uh, uh, you've got to say no! <laughs> and that's really how our relationship started, of course, we both ran, ran straight back to Facebook and updated those sentences, didn't we? <laughs> Anyway, it's been, it's been absolutely fabulous coming back to the Isle of Man since 2009. Um, and it's been wonderful that Ruth, uh, Jack, Jade and Ryan have really invited me into their, yeah, into their house. And not only me, but also James and Lena as well. And I think the last two and a half years have been, has been a learning experience for all of us, hasn't it, really, as we, as we all get to know each other individually. But I think the seven of us make a great family, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Certainly booking holidays is interesting because, you know, when you come as a group of seven, 
uh, hotels and, and all those kind of things, they actually look at you as a group. So we can't actually book on Expedia, can we? And when we try and get a taxi, we can only uh, go on a minibus, can't we? And, uh, and this week, actually, we've had one dad and grandma staying at the house. It's been like a scene out of the Bolton's house. And he's like, good night, grandma, good night, great-grandma. So, uh, yeah, it's been quite interesting being a family of seven. And you know what? We also want to just thank everybody in this room as well, because you've invited us all into your homes, both with and I as a couple for your support, but also for us as a family as well, and we, we really appreciate that. And also for this wider family as well, who've really made me feel like part of their family from the moment I've arrived back. I've been made to feel straight away as a son-in-law, as a brother-in-law, as a, as a nephew, and as a stepdad. So thank you, everybody. And I, you know, it's just lovely that today I can officially call myself those things, so thank you guys. I really love that. side of our little Manx pond here over in England, uh, Ruthie was getting introduced to my family at the same time. And you know what, they fell in love with Ruthie almost as much as I did, you know, straight away. I think it's safe to say that mom and grandma, from the moment they met, Ruth just knew that they were going to have to go out and buy hats for today. <laughs> and bless him, my grandfather, who's no longer with us, you know, he, he took me aside after he first met Ruth and he said, you know what, David, we think that she's lovely. And he, thinks, uh, he said, we think that you're perfect together and you should hold on to her forever. So, Grandad, if you're looking today, I really took your advice. So, for all my family and friends who are getting to know Ruth a little bit better, I thought I would share with you three things that you may already know about Ruth and three things that you might not know. Three things that you might already know about Ruth. Ruthie makes the best Sunday roast in Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. It's absolutely true. I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm sorry, Mum. It's, it's true. By the way, if anybody doesn't know this, just come to our house on the Sunday night. The, the queue is long because the queers are usually at the front of the queue. Yeah. Just remember who's cooking the meal when you come back from your honeymoon. Yeah. 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 Woohoo! Well done. Actually, they say the way to a man is through his heart. Well, Ruth, you've really, really... Through his, sorry, it's through his stomach. And Ruth, you've really, really succeeded on that score. Uh, another thing about Ruth, Ruth loves virtually every single song that's played on the radio. Okay? She does. As soon as it comes on, it's like, oh my goodness, I love this song, I love this song. And you know, if I had a pound for every time I heard that, I would be a millionaire. Don't you think, kids? Yeah. 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 She loves every song. And the third thing you may or may not know about Ruth, she loves to dance. She's the first on the dance floor, and she's the last one to leave. And if you don't know that now, you will do by the end of tonight. She's been known to dance on chairs, tables, and poles. And uh, let's not forget the world famous Ruthie dance. Does anybody want to, uh, can anyone do that? Come on, yeah, kids. Yeah, come on, guys. We'll, we'll do the, the Ruthie dance. Ruthie, yeah. that you may have actually been treated to this in the stand, do you? Yeah, yeah. Jack. Yeah. You love it. Some things about my wife, which if you didn't already know, then you really, really should. First of all, Ruth is the funniest person I have ever, ever met. I've never laughed so much in my life as I have these last few years. And many times she's actually reduced me to tears of laughter, literally. That's not her. Literally. She really is just the funniest person I've ever met. Sorry, I'm almost there. Ruth has an incredible energy, determination, and zest for life, and a can-do attitude that is just totally infectious. You only have to spend a moment with Ruth to be totally hooked. First thing in the morning, from the moment she wakes up and declares, I'm a tiger! <laughs> she charges off at a high-octane pace and leaves the rest of us struggling to catch up. And that's really, I'm terrible at that coffee in the morning, so Ruth really is the bedrock of our family. And finally, Ruth is one of the most caring, generous, and thoughtful people I know, um, both with her own time and her resources. She always puts her family and friends first, and I honestly think you would give your last penny if you thought it would help a friend. So Ruth, I am absolutely totally in awe of you. I think you look absolutely stunning today, but then I say wow every single morning when I see Ruth. I've learned so much from you these last few years. And you're just totally my best friend in the whole wide world, and I'd do anything for you, and I love you more than life. So thank you for making me the happiest man alive and for loving me as much as I love you. Aww. So guys, I was... I would like to 
actually making an unscheduled toast, Mr. Toastmaster. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the most important toast I'll ever make in my life. Okay? Is this on the itinerary? No. It's not on the itinerary. I'm being spontaneous. To my wife, my bride, to Ruthie. Mm. I'd also like to just say a very big thank you for everybody who came today. I know some of you have come from a really long way. We've got people from Spain. People from, we've got people from Bermuda. People from the UK. And a really great people who came down from Ramsey today. Thank you. And also thank you for you guys who brought us a little piece of our honeymoon and just for the wedding presents, that's just been absolutely lovely. Now, there were some people who really wanted to be here today, so I'm going to take a little look. Um, but unfortunately, due to travel and all that kind of stuff, they weren't able to make it. So, in the old days, people used to send telegrams, and then it was faxes, and now, with the power of Facebook, woo, she set up a Facebook wedding page. <laughs> Oh, we've got lots of uh, funny ones there as well. To our beautiful cousin Ruthie and groom to be, we wish you all the very best wishes in your married life together, and we assure you will be very happy together. We wish you could have attended the big day. Oops, it's gone. Uh, but lots of other ones Jason, Marion, Rachel, Josh, and. Was that Caleb? And uh, we've got messages from Bermuda. I'll just read one more actually from Australia. Dave, remember that everything is shared in a marriage. You get to share the blame and Ruth gets to share the credit and with your credit card. Right, I think that's about it. Uh, so listen, thanks once again for sharing this wonderful day with us. I think you all agree that Ruthie and her bridesmaids, and I have to say that because yeah. sister-in-law now, no, uh, Ruthie and her bridesmaids are absolutely lovely. So could you all please stand, charge your glasses, and raise a toast please, and join me to toast the bridesmaids.